My name is Dr. Apogee, I'm one of the cardiologists here at Royal Stoke Hospital. So my heart failure is not a single diagnosis, and so the diagnosis is not quite straightforward sometimes. And what we often look for is symptoms that you may experience, signs that we may see when we examine you, and then there'll be some blood tests and some other imaging tests that we look at to assess the heart in more detail. So when we're thinking about the kind of symptoms you may have, breathlessness, so feeling short of breath when you're doing things, um, or when potentially when you're lying down in bed. Um, swelling, the swelling of your legs, most commonly, sometimes of your tummy. And then um, a fatigue, general tiredness, more than you would expect. These are the three most common symptoms. Other things that people may experience might be a cough, particularly when lying down in bed, or feeling breathless when they're lying down in bed and needing to sit up. So these are the symptoms that you may present to your GP with. They will then look for some signs when they examine you. So when they're looking at you, they will listen to the heart, listening for any murmurs that may suggest a problem with one of the valves. They'll have a feel of the pulse, feeling for the heart rate, and looking at the heart rhythm. And then they will have a look at the legs, if there's any swelling down there, listen to the lungs, and look at the veins in the neck as well, looking for signs of fluid building up in you. So if you have symptoms of heart failure and you have some signs of heart failure, then they may go on to do further tests to try and make sure that this is heart failure. And that would usually start with a blood test. So there is a blood marker called BNP, which is very good for diagnosing heart failure. If this blood marker is elevated, that does often fit in that this patient has heart failure, but I would like to point out that this blood test can be raised for other reasons, so just because it's raised does not mean that you definitely have heart failure. However, if it is negative, it does mean that heart failure is much less likely. Following the blood test, and if you've got signs and symptoms, you'll often be referred either directly for a test to look at the heart or to the heart failure service where we will then arrange for you to have one of these tests. And the main test in this point of view is the echocardiogram. This is a ultrasound scan, so similar to what people have, uh, ladies have when they're pregnant, where they put jelly on the tummy and scan the baby. We do a similar type scan for the heart, so they put jelly on the chest and scanning the heart with ultrasound waves. This allows us to look at the pump function of the heart, look at the size of the heart, and assess the heart valves as well. And from that we can see whether there's any problems with these parts of the heart. The echocardiogram usually takes about 20 minutes to half an hour, and it'll involve you lying down on a bed, potentially on your left-hand side. Other tests that you may have as well would be additional blood tests, so if they think you have heart failure, they may look at other things such as your blood counts, your kidney counts, and your liver function. We may also do a tracing of your heart to look at the heart rhythm in more detail, and that's where they put stickers across the chest and take an ECG. Based on the signs, symptoms, blood tests, and the echocardiogram, we should be able to make a diagnosis of heart failure, and then you may go on to have further tests to, to try and elucidate what the cause of heart failure is. The additional test that we'd be thinking about there would be Say if you are having palpitations, we may have a heart monitor for 24 hours. If the heart pump is not well seen on the echocardiogram, we may suggest a MRI scan of your heart or a nuclear scan of the heart. And if you were describing symptoms of chest pain, we may think about angiograms or CT scans to look at the heart arteries. Those would be discussed with you by the cardiologist once they've seen you. So heart failure is not a single diagnosis, and there are two main forms that we try and split things into. There's heart failure from the heart not pumping well, and there's heart failure from the heart becoming stiffened. And the reason we split them into these two groups is they do have different treatments. When the heart is not pumping well, we know there are certain medications and tablets that we call commonality treatments 
that we were trying to establish you on. These tablets do also affect blood pressure and kidney function, so we tend to start them at a low dose and build them up bit by bit. If the heart is stiffened, and that's the reason why you've got heart failure, the treatments are slightly different, and that is mainly around trying to optimise things like blood pressure and heart rate. No matter the cause of your heart failure, if you have fluid building up on you, we would prescribe water tablets or diuretics to help relieve that fluid. Outside of the tablet treatment, when we're treating heart failure, we also need to look at lifestyle interventions. If you're building up with fluid, we are likely to recommend that you would restrict how much fluid you take in during the day, usually to between one and a half to two litres. Things like exercise are important. Your heart is a muscle and trying to keep it working is uh, good for your heart and we'd encourage you to try and remain active and address other lifestyle things such as diet, weight, smoking, alcohol. All of these things will be discussed with you by the heart failure nurses who see you.